Hi, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Welcome to Extrication Minutes, every Tuesday on Fire Engineering. This week, we're going to talk about a little thing that I call copy and paste training. We'll also talk about overcoming ultra high strength steels. So this week I want to start things a little bit differently than I typically do. I get given t-shirts all the time from different firefighters from around the world. Sometimes guys will send them in to us. Um, other times, of course, at trainings we'll be given t-shirts. Uh, and we always appreciate them. So I want to start thanking guys for the t-shirts uh, when I receive them. And uh, this week I want to thank the Gwinnett County, Georgia guys. Thanks for the shirt, guys. I, I appreciate it. So let's talk about first what I call copy and paste training. Social media has done a lot of wonderful things for, for really all aspects of life, but it's also had its share of problems. We see that all the time on social media sites like Facebook, where we get that snowball sharing of uh, a, an, an article of some kind or uh, a, new, you know, a little news uh, blurb, and it's just completely inaccurate. So we see that all the time, and those of us that have kids, we talk to our kids about that. We say, hey, on social media, you can't believe everything that you see, and you can't just share everything that pops up. We need to fact check it. Now, for social media, there's Snoops, and there's some other sites where you can do some fact checking. But in the fire service, we're seeing a snowball effect of misinformation, and a lot of it comes from social media. It's that copy and paste style training where we don't do a lot of fact checking. Now this is something I would typically talk about in one of my train the trainer programs, but I thought it would be good to cover here because it applies to ultra high strength steel and vehicle construction features. We've got a snowball effect, a snowball effect of misinformation happening online right now regarding that topic. So let's look at this first, just this one example. This is the Chevy Volt. And a lot of instructors in their presentations or online, you may have seen these types of drawings. They're uh, computer animated drawings that the auto industry has created to make the consumer feel better about the safety aspects of the vehicle. Of course, the auto industry doesn't create these for rescuers. These drawings that we see with the multicolored vehicles, all the different components uh, are, are labeled with different tensile strengths or, or or construction materials, those were not made for rescuers. Those were made, those were created to make the consumer feel warm and fuzzy about the safety of the vehicle. You see, there's so many different variables when we talk about the construction material utilized in the construction of the vehicle. It may be you know, 1080 or 980 dual phase steel. It might be boron steel, but the thickness uh, of that steel may vary dramatically, and there's a whole bunch of other var variables when we talk about m blending, metal blending, that go into that. The only sure way we're going to know whether or not that material will challenge our power rescue spreaders or cutters or ram is to put that tool to the vehicle. So we need to be careful as rescuers and as instructors of vehicle rescue and extrication that we don't look at those consumer drawings, those those computer animated drawings that were made for the consumer and we can't say oh look that's boron in the B pillar so we can't cut it. We've got to be very careful with that. This Chevy Volt picture that we were that we're looking at here. Everything in blue is advanced steel. Now does that mean it's ultra high strength steel? A lot of instructors will put this picture up or have shared this on the internet and they'll say everything in blue is advanced steel, therefore it could challenge us at our incidents. The truth of the matter is there's really not much on the Chevy Volt that will challenge most modern power rescue cutters. Especially if we look at this drawing you see in the upper rail area the whole thing is that blue color. Well, we know that a manufacturer isn't going to make the crumple zone, the area of the vehicle that's designed to crush out of ultra high strength steel. So why is it that they call it advanced steel? And we've got to be careful with the way that we identify these metals. Auto industry calls it advanced steel because it's a specialty blend of metal that they've used. It doesn't mean that it's ultra high strength steel. And then in some cases, manufacturers will call a material 
ultra high strength steel and in fact it is but it's not going to challenge our power rescue cutters so there's very limited uh, resources out there for really identifying where ultra high strength steel is located in the vehicle and then it's even more challenging to identify whether or not the power rescue tools that you're using can cut that material it really is a matter of putting the tool to the vehicle and attempting to make that cut so let's talk about ultra high strength steel where do we find it? Well, we find ultra high strength steel on the passenger compartment of the vehicle. So we may see it in the B pillar, the A pillar, the C, the D pillar. We may occasionally see it on the rocker channel or rocker panel of the vehicle. We may, very rarely, but we may see it on the windshield header and again on the, uh, the roof beams, the roof support members. So we may see it there as well. But the most common location is going to be in the B pillar. Now in late model convertibles, we often see ultra high strength steel in the A pillar of that vehicle because in the rollover test, it doesn't have that roof rail and that B pillar to really support that rollover test or that, that, that A pillar crush test. So in convertibles, we see it very often on the A pillar. Otherwise, we're typically gonna see it on that B pillar. So what do we need to do? What do we need to know as rescuers to overcome it? Well, the first thing I would suggest is you've gotta try. So go ahead and try to make that cut. Now, when you're choosing your, your location for the cut, we want to do that based on what we want to accomplish. Use your standard procedure for choosing the location of your cut right out of the bat. So wherever you've chosen that location, we do want to make sure that we allow for pressure buildup time in the tool. And we've talked about that in an earlier Extrication Minutes video when we talked about cutter use. We want to allow at least eight seconds on a standard length hose line for our pressure to build up in our tool. So we engage that handle, we let that tool build up pressure for eight seconds. If we release the handle, we've got to start over. Give it that full eight seconds. It can seem like a long time at the incident. So we've done that and we've not able to cut that B pillar. The other thing that we can do is we can change our cutting angle. Typically we would come in and try to cut the B pillar of the vehicle from a perpendicular angle. Now we may want to try parallel. Oftentimes because of the way the metal is folded in the B pillar, we actually get a better cut perpendicular. Don't try in the same location. You're going to want to move a little bit. If we still don't have success with the parallel cut, we may want to move the location of our cut on that pillar. What we find typically is as you move up towards the roof rail or down towards the bottom at the rocker channel, it's going to become thinner metals. Also that reinforcement bar or pipe or rod that may be in that pillar, it's typically only going to be in the area where the vehicle is crash tested and that's right at the occupant's shoulder and hip area. So above that or below that, we're gonna find we don't see those rods or bars inside those pillars as often. So those are just a couple of quick tips for overcoming ultra high strength steels. And again, be aware of the copy and paste training. We wanna fact check all the information that's out there before we share it or before we go teach it and especially before we try to use it at our incidents. Hey, thanks for making us a part of your weekly training routine. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for YouTube exclusive videos as well. I'm Brock Archer. Take care and be safe.